Hey guys, um, I'm going to do a quick live stream. Um, I'm not going to be reading chat or anything, but I want to give a quick tutorial uh, because with this newfound knowledge, I think it'd be very helpful to help out some certain individuals with this very problem. A lot of people are wanting to know how to easily emulate games on their computer or corrupt their games on computer and how to do so you know, without downloading any viruses, stuff like that, because I myself am a type of person that like looks at a site and just like, mm, this looks kind of sketch. But in the end, I, I, I finally found something that that seems really good. So first place to start is you're going to be needing to first look at looking, sorry, you're going to be looking for RTC or also known as in other words, the real time corrupter. Uh, launcher uh, all you need to do is really just search it up on Google and then you click the first link hang on if I just were to go and do it RTC launcher the real-time corruptor right here go all the way down and download this right here um, and it'll bring up this type of menu as well as I believe this I believe it brings up both of these the real-time corruptor as well so if not there are two different types of downloads i did this earlier today it's also 1 11 in the morning so i'm doing my best to also explain it but after you get the rtc uh, launcher there are all these different types of programs on what they specifically do so dolphin is the one that i am using as it says on the side it's able to run nintendo gamecube and nintendo wii games i'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial to do GameCube and Wii games just for right now. But right here you have NES, SNES, Genesis, 64, um, PlayStation 2, Windows, uh, Nintendo DS games, 3DS games, all those are other certain things that you can use. But for right now, we're just going to be using GameCube or Nintendo Wii. So after you get that uh, all set up, you're going to be wanting to click on Dolphin in order to get GameCube and Nintendo Wii, uh, and after you download both of them, both the real-time corruptor window will pop up. Just leave that to the side for it now, and this will be blank. It will not have this in here. This is the only game that I have in here right now, but it'll say something along the lines of there are no games being able to run or something like that. There'll be a text like in the middle of it that will say, hey, there are no titles that are able to work right now. So we're going to put these off to the side just for right now. We'll come back to those in a second. So now we're going to go to a site called Vim's Layer Vault. So you go search it up. This should be the first thing that comes up. Vim's Layer, and then in our case, we will go to Wii. Then you can search up literally any game that you want. So I'll do Super Mario Wii. So the Super Mario Bros. Wii. You can download either one of the two types of uh, format you can do this one or this one this one recommends that you don't do it uh, I don't know exactly why it doesn't really matter download one of these and depending on what kind of site you're on since this is Google it'll appear at the bottom I'm not going to download it right now or if you are using I don't know the other type of uh, site it's called but it'll appear up in the top right for your downloads uh, so after you get those downloads just drag it onto your desktop it will either show up in a form like this. If it looks like this already, then you're good, and it means that you probably have WinRAR. But normally it's gonna show up something like this, where it has, not disk image file, I don't, I don't need that. That's just another part of it. But it'll show up like a pe like the piece of paper icon, basically, is the best way that I can put it. So when it looks like that, that means that you are not quite done yet. You're going to need to go and search up WinRAR, download, I used this one, that's the best way that I probably could put it, just type in WinRAR and you'll get something like this. You will then take that file after you downloaded it and it'll give you the extract files. You're gonna just hit extract here and then it'll turn it into these types of files. So you'll also put it in a folder as well, that's what I would recommend. It says SMB Wii, but you can just make it for Wii games or anything along those lines. So now you're going to go back to your dolphin. Oh, I think I launched it twice. No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. So you're going to go to here and you're going to 
the file, open, go to where your thing is, and hit open. I'm assuming it's just go like that. Nope, not like that. Well, I guess technically yes and no. That's, not, that's how you just start the game. But in a way, there's going to be a way of how you can just select the entire folder, and then you can just select the folder, put it in here, and then you have it available to you. So the way that the real-time corruptor also works, so if, if, if you're wanting to just play, you don't even need this part. All you really need is that if you're wanting to corrupt your games, then you could also get this. Uh, I would recommend just getting it just for the sake of getting it. Uh, just to make it easier for both if you also want to corrupt your games later in the future. But basically all it is is if you just want to emulate your games, you're going to be using Dolphin. But if you're also wanting to use real-time corrupt to corrupt your games, this is also easier just to have along the side. So now that it is emulated, basically you can just play it. Nope, not like that. You can click on this and then hit play. And then you can use your keybinds in order to change how the controls work. I set uh, my specific buttons to... One as O and two as P, and that is loud to me. There we go. We're going to go like that, so then we can play the game all normally. Everything's still there. Uh, if you need help with knowing what controls are what, you can go to controls. Uh, this one's for GameCube, this one is for the Wii. You can configure and you can change all these different things, motion controls, general options, all that and such to your own liking. Very simple enough. So, now if you're wanting to know how to corrupt your game, just hit play just as you did before. You're then going to open up the real-time corruptor, and there are different ways of how you can do this. The first thing I recommend is that you change this to vector engine, that's the best thing that works. And in order for your limiter list and value list, there are certain sets that work. The two that I have found that work the best is one and two. This gets you normally the best results that you can find. Or you can use like negative one and one or something along those lines. For right now, we're just gonna do one and two. Uh, so that's all you really need to do for there. Just get those right there. Uh, don't mess with any of this stuff. It just kind of automatically highlights it. So intensity is how much is going to be changed. So obviously the higher you go, the more it's gonna be changed and the more likely it could probably crash too. So, and then this is error delay. Error delay, you probably want to be as low as possible because you can get it immediately, and it's nice. Uh, unless you're doing start auto corrupt. So, you have different types of blast radiuses. So you have spread, chunk, burst, even, uh, proportional, and normalized. I'm really quickly going to make this shut up uh, because it's probably going to get a little bit annoying. There we go. So, we're going to go back to here. Um, we have different types of things. So intensity is obviously how much is going to be glitched and how, just how much. And then air delay is going to be the rate at which it does it, which if I do one, then it'll be automatic. Or if I go higher, then it'll be a little bit more of a delay. So you have these different types of changes. They're not really consistent and that's kind of a good thing so that you don't know exactly what's going to happen. You kind of can see some patterns, but normally if you keep on changing this, it'll always keep on changing certain results. So let's just say that I want to do chunk. I want to do intensity and error. Also, when you set this up, there's also going to ask you if you want simple mode or normal mode. Click on normal for this. Uh, if you want easy just to kind of get the ropes of it, that'll guide you through. You can also do that, but I think that this is also the easiest way to know exactly what you want. So. Now that you have your intensity and your error delay, we're going to set this as if we're going to be doing manual blast, which means that right when you click this is when the effects are going to be in place. So I'm going to go like this. Not really much happens. So if you click it a few times, start, some things start to change. Audio is boosted. Certain things are changing a little bit. Not a whole lot. But if you wanted to do it at a little bit more of like a constant rate of doing some stuff, you might want to turn up this and then start auto corrupt so over time you will see that things will kind of happen over time if you want it to go faster turn that down if you want more stuff to happen you can go like that so see now the ones changing a whole bunch of different things are going to be changing so if i want to go crazier there you go so now you get into some of the more crazier stuff and then just hit stop auto corrupt corrupt in order for it to stop 
and then you can just yeah that's also another thing you need to also be sure that there you go uh -oh. <laughs> like so so now you can access your game and and <laughs> oh my god he's a cyclops <laughs> But yeah, you get to enjoy your game and all the different types of corruptions that you can get. Uh, I'm going to close out of this just for right now. Just to go more in depth with this. So this is basically, you'll have a whole list of different games that you have on here depending on how many you have. For right now I just have this, so it's not that important right now. This will be the interface that you'll, you can even close this. This will be the interface that you're going to be wanting to change uh, with it being on the engine configuration and you don't even really need to look at this you don't need to look at this unless you want a very specific type of glitch and all in all your end goal well this menu is important in order for you to start the game if i could open up both menus uh and then this interface is for changing and corrupting the game so if i want to do it one more time and the best way that i find normally when it comes down to corrupting games is i Turn up intensity, go like this, and then I do manual blast for multiple different types of, of things so that I can get different types of results. So you can experiment with what exactly happens. It's so like, I wanna hit spread, boom, boom. And then I wanna hit even, hit that a few times, burst, <laughs> stuff like that. Over time, certain things will do specific types of things. Um, the more crazy and higher up the intensity bar is, the more crazy things will get. And you can have fun with all sorts of fun stuff that you can do. Like so. Yeah. So that's a basic tutorial on how to do that. So to run down one more time is easiest place to start is by making sure that you get yourself the RTC launcher, uh, depending on what you're using. Uh, if you're using it for Wii or GameCube, get Dolphin, uh, and it will automatically get both the connecting launcher for the real-time corruptor as well as Dolphin itself. Um, make sure you go to Vim's layer, download the file of the game that you're wanting to use, plop it on down, ready for you to do, convert it using WinRAR, and then put it into the correct folder that you've made. It doesn't correct folder as in just a folder that you made for it. Um, and then access Dolphin and just plop it on in. Uh, for reference on making sure that you actually are able to corrupt it correctly, is every single time you want to corrupt your game, just go into RTC Launcher and click on Dolphin because it'll bring up both the menus and connect them automatically. See, it's already saying, hey, here we go, you're connected, and figures out exactly what it's supposed to be connecting to. Every single time you join on here, it will change it back to normally Nightmare, and then you just change it back to one and two. Um, also, I do recommend, don't be alarmed. Um, I remember this really freaked me out. I don't know why it plays this sound whenever you do this, but every single time that you specifically only close the dolphin one, it makes a glass breaking noise. Oh, yeah, like there. Uh, I was just not expecting it, and it really like, weirded me out. It'll automatically fix it. If you're wanting to close both tabs, all you need to do is just close out of the real-time corruptor, and then you are all good. That's the basic tutorial. If you do have any questions, please let me know. I know that it's not super in-depth on how to do this. It's kind of like the basic principle as for a step-by-step -step guide, starting out with just making sure you know Vim's Lair. Also, don't judge them watching Call Me Carson because I want to. Vim's Lair, you can use all these types of games that you can get as long as you're also able to download the correct type of launcher. So if you're also wanting to download any of these, this one's green because I downloaded it. If I wanted BizHawk, just click on it. And then I was like, oh, there you go, downloaded. And then you're all good. That's basically all there is to it. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I really need to get into for it. It's pretty straightforward. It's really fun. Um, I've been having a lot of fun just messing around with it. I did an earlier video on it and I can't wait to do more videos on it. So if you guys are wanting to do more stuff like this, 
uh, I do encourage you guys to have fun with stuff like this because I, I, I almost didn't do it because I thought it was a little bit too difficult to do. But in the end, it was definitely a lot of fun, and I was glad I was able to actually get it done. So thank you guys all so much for watching this. I hope this helped you guys out and that you guys have a lot of fun with this because it is truly so much fun to use. So I hope to see you guys all in the next video, and I'll 